So hello everyone, my name is Maya and I work in support services with Rochelle at Prostate Cancer Foundation BC and our support initiative, Prostate Cancer Support Canada. Thank you for your time today. We hope that this conference will exceed your, your expectations. Support services staff are here to help groups in any way that we can. This ranges from helping find guest speakers, helping to find meeting locations, help with marketing materials, et cetera. I have been incredibly grateful to work for this organization and with all of you in support group leadership. I see how grassroots everything is, how much time, effort, and energy we all put into supporting men and their families across the country who have been affected by prostate cancer. I'm here today to talk to you about the future of meetings in person and online. Due to the pandemic and the many changes that it has brought about, we've had to deal with how we conduct support group meetings and what they will look like in the future. We must say that groups have done an incredible job of continuing to provide support for members during this difficult time. So in person, before the pandemic, this was the main mode of conducting group meetings. In-person meetings allow for easier connections as often people feel it's easier to see people physically. It's easier to have private side conversations as opposed to online meetings, and there's a greater sense of intimacy and empathy. And for this last point, this is extremely important when it comes to making effective connections and making men feel comfortable to share their stories. Next, we have online meetings. Pandemic restrictions force support groups to either stop conducting meetings entirely or move online. Prostate cancer patients are a higher risk community because they have cancer and also because they tend to be older. Um, moving online required learning new technology. So leaders, members, and support services staff had, all had to learn new things, and we are proud of the progress we've made in that respect. Pandemic social restrictions, while necessary to keep people healthy, had negative effects on social relationships and mental health. So we're incredibly glad that meetings were still able to take place online during such a difficult time. There are many pros and cons that have been brought about for online meetings. One pro is it allowed for meetings to cover a larger geographic area. People were able to attend meetings from anywhere in the world and were able to record guest speakers, which was always really cool. The cons are what many of the pros are for in-person meetings. So for example, many say that it's easier to make social connections with people in person. We've also heard a lot of differing opinions. Some groups are thriving with members happy to save time, energy, and continue to abide by recommended public health guidelines, while others are struggling to maintain attendance. Every group is different and has different needs, which brings us to our next meeting type and what we believe will be the future of meetings. Hybrid. So hybrid meetings combine online and in-person meetings. Once restrictions were lifted, it became apparent that there were those who preferred meeting online and that there were those who were elated to come back in person. These types of meetings will give attendees the choice to go with the option that best suits their needs. Moving on to hybrid required the use of new technology in order to provide the best experience for those attending in person and online. <clears throat> Preference varied from group to group and member to member, and we support the decisions made by support group leaders on how they wish to proceed with conducting their meetings now that restrictions have been lifted. Support services staff are more than happy to provide the equipment and training needed for hybrid meetings absolutely free of charge. So here we have a bit of an infographic of what hybrid meetings look like. So on the left, we have those who are attending in person. And then on the right, we have those who are attending online. So if we see with the in-person attendees, all the equipment that is needed, and I'll go over that equipment in the next few slides. And then on the right, those who are attending virtually log on to Zoom or whichever streaming platform that you're using and with their electronic device from a place that suits their needs. So keeping everyone engaged. Another very important note to make, um, to make sure that no group is neglected. And by group, I mean those who are attending in person and those who are attending online. So it's easier to forget one part of the group when you're doing hybrid meetings. You have to make sure that you're engaging with both audiences and all activities that are done with one audience should be able to adapt it to one to the other audience. So some examples of how to include both attendees include alternating between online and in-person attendees during a question and answer period and ensuring that activities can be conducted both in person and online. For example, if you're doing small group discussions, allow in-person attendees to break into groups in person and then create breakout groups for those who are attending online. Additionally, the Zoom chat function can be used for those attending online to make comments. 
Often they may not be able to engage in the small talk that takes place in the meeting room. You may have another uh, member of your support group leadership take care of the chat and read the comments and questions out loud to those who are attending in person. So how we support you, hybrid meeting equipment. Support services staff are more than happy to provide and send equipment free of charge to groups who would like to do hybrid meetings. We will also help and train those who need it and we have an in-depth guide available. So depending on the meeting size, the setup of the room, uh, there may not be a need for all the equipment that is listed here. Support group leaders with the help of support services staff should use their discernment to decide which of the recommended electronic equipment is necessary to run a hybrid meeting. The most important things to consider for a hybrid meeting is making sure that everyone can see and hear one another for both in-person and online attendees. The equipment that is shown on this screen is meant for that. So I'll go over everything really quickly. Uh, on the top left, we have a conference speakerphone, and this works as both a microphone for online attendees to hear in-person attendees, and as a speaker for in-person attendees to be able to hear those who are attending online. It can be connected via Bluetooth or directly to the computer that you're using. On the bottom left, we have a webcam. So this gives a wide angle view of the in-person attendees so that those attending online have a better view of the room. And this can also be connected to your computer directly using a USB cable. On the top row in the middle, we have a projector. So the projector gives those attending in person a better view of those attending online, and it can be connected in multiple ways. So instead of them looking at a small computer screen, they're able to you know, see it projected onto a wall or onto a screen. On the bottom in the middle, we have a USB hub. So this, because you have so many connections and your computer probably can't support all of those, this USB hub connects to your computer and allows you to have multiple connections running simultaneously. And then lastly, we provide any necessary cables that you'll need. The best advice that we can offer you guys is that to keep it as simple as possible, uh, smaller groups can easily host hybrid meetings with just a laptop. So all of this equipment is usually just to make sure that groups who are bigger are able to have meetings, that can accommodate as many guests as possible. Okay, and last, certainly not least, the main takeaway here is that it's your call. You guys know your groups way better than we do. So you guys know what you're comfortable with and you know what's best for your group. You know how best to provide support that reaches who it needs to and that allows for men to open up and ask questions. Prostate cancer support leaders have done an incredible job throughout the pandemic and we know that it's been hard. It can be hard to see your group membership dwindling. It can be hard when you know you aren't reaching as many people as you know that you can and you know need support. But still, you've all persevered and we're very grateful for that. And I know that all the men in your support groups are as well. Whichever option you choose, whether it be in person, online or hybrid, we're gonna be here to help you and we hope that it allows you to make the most impact. So thank you all, that's all from me. Thanks, Maya.